Welcome to another edition of Pep Talk. I'm your host, Rosie Peppy Park, and my guest this evening is Kwame McPherson, author and poet of several books. And we're going to have a really great conversation with him when we come back. Keep it locked. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the show. To be in these places at the time that. So, yeah, I'm in the right place at the right time. Yeah, what's happening now? I told you that the Jamaican accent was going to come out. I'd love to be able to name all the bands, and I can't. But, but, but I know I'm going to. You've been called selfless, you've been called kind, loving, all kinds of stuff. We know you're passionate about Talk about your little 10 month old son. Yeah. Talk about that. Your private joy. So, Mr. McPherson, welcome to Pep Talk. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out to come and rap with us today. Thank you for the opportunity. And I know that your government name is Michael McPherson. <laughs> I like I know, that, yeah. yeah, I know you have a Ghanaian name. <laughs> yes. Kwame. Yes, that's correct. Why why Kwame McPherson? Um well it's it's interesting is that when you when I started um when I came here, I came back here. Mm -hmm. uh, um I was very radical. You know, so I, you know, I came in a time when just like when I came in eighty five there was Broadway the rats and when he, when he went into institutions and stuff, he realized about institutionalized racism, it, it colour your skin and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I became very radical. I was chair of the Black Worker Support Group, trade union shop steward, so I decided to take over a name, which is, I was born on a Saturday, and Kwame means Saturday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it was, for me, it was significant because Kwame Nkrumah was the first president of, of Ghana and mm -hmm. what he stood for. So for me, it's that significant. So I decided to become, you know, a, a force <laughs> in, the, in the institutions that I worked in, and, and then I saw the name came about long before I started writing. Okay. Um, so, it, so it's a name that you've owned up to um, long before you yeah. started doing your books under that name. Definitely. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing. Where are you from? Well, I was born here. Here born in, in London. In London. Yeah, but I, I, my father took me back when I was very young, probably mm -hmm. about six. And I grew, up, I grew up in Jamaica, I spent all my life in Jamaica. And, and I, if you ask me anything about those formative years when I grew up here, I couldn't tell you. you know I mean? <laughs> it's, always, it's, like, it's just completely dark, you know, mm -hmm. dark. No recollection of, of, of that time. Um, and it was, it's interesting because I ended up going to Tarrant Primary School um, on Walter Park Road mm -hmm. with my brother. Um, and what is, what is int very interesting, you know, with, as, as a writer, what I found out is that back in the, the 60s and the 70s, there's a lot of Jamaicans who came here and went back with their children, mm -hmm. I mean, who were born here. But a lot of people don't know that. They figure, they figure that that didn't happen, but that happened. A lot of people came here, did what they had to do, and they went back with their children. Mm -hmm. There was quite a number of, of students at the time in Tarrant Primary School. Who were, who were born here but grew up in Jamaica. And there's okay. still, still, still many people who are still doing that today. Okay. So you went to Tarrant Primary, and what about um, for high school? Where did you go? I moved on to Calabar. Calabar. Yeah, yeah, Calabar. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, best high school, you know, best boy school. Right. And then right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, know, you can't contest that. You know, you have KC and Dodgers and GC and all of that. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's Calabar was, was, was a grounding, you know. Um, and, to, and it's funny because. Even though at primary school I was encouraged to write, mm -hmm. uh, as you were at the time, um, we were able to write for that. Children's Zone, which is like being a newspaper mm -hmm, publication. Mm -hmm. um, we were taught to write poetry and, and, and stories and, and reading, you know, because that was encouraged. Um, I went into high school, that was even encouraged more so. But I didn't, I didn't follow it up. Well, my brother did. My brother was won awards at high school for his yeah. writing. He was mm -hmm. much, much more brilliant than I was at the ages that we were at. I've, st I've continued now, and he hasn't. <laughs> okay. okay, so you got a, lar a late start. He started yeah. early, and he's not doing it anymore, no, doing and it. you're doing it now. When did you get that writing bug? The writing bug? Well, I always said that from our, from our born, I'm, I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I've always said that, okay, and I keep saying that. But the, the realization came in 2006. Mm -hmm. um, prior to 2006, like back in the 90s when I came here, and I was writing still as a hobby, I've, I've won a number of awards. Um, Heinemann Publication, which at the time was a, a major publication, um, I did a synopsis for a, a love story based in Jamaica, mm -hmm. um, and I won an award for that. I did um, some poetry work for a group, uh, a South London group called ASA, and I, and I won an award for that, for Black Angel, which is a poem. Um, so I, so the, here and there, there were, there were like awards for my writing, but I still took it as a hobby. 
and it was in 2006 when I had, I had migrated to Canada. Uh-huh. And it was whilst there I was going through, you know, it's almost like, you know, if you're equated to, to like a Bible story, like Jesus went into the wilderness and, and, that, and I figured that that was my wilderness. You know, I had to go somewhere in order to find out who I was, right. where I am, my direction and that kind of thing. And it was at that time then when, it's, it's almost like, you know, you have visions and you have dreams and, and at that time something came to me, I said, yo, Bridget, you're good at writing, you know, right. you know this is what you're good at doing, so mm-hmm. go back to that. And I had written some poems, just for fun, back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And all those poems that I did then came into my first book, Our Eternal Legacy. So, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, so it's a compilation of those 90s poems. And that was, um, Our, Our Eternal Legacy came out in 2000, 2007. 2007. Yeah. So all the time that you were winning these awards, you took writing as a hobby. As a hobby. You never thought that since you're winning awards, you had something going on? Yeah, exactly. No, I didn't. Until, so, until I, that, that was the challenges that I was having in my life at the time, 2006. In 2006. And I mean, emotionally and financially and everything else. And I was going through a, a, a dark time, so to mm-hmm. speak. That's when I came back. It's also almost like the creator said to me, said, this is what I want you to be doing, you know? Okay. And that's when I started me on a journey, you know? I'm Excellent. Right. And your first book is Our called Our Eternal Legacy. Legacy. Yeah. And this is a collection of poems. Yeah. So, um, poetry, yeah. some of these you had started doing prior yeah. to taking yourself seriously, yeah, exactly. even though you had the talent. Yeah. Um, what, what did you get the name? Where did you come up with this name for this book? Um, again, it's, a, it's an inspiration because I sat down and I said, there's something I want to, I want to, I want to start off with in terms of who we are the people, where we're going as a people for myself. And I, and I brainstormed a number, of, a number of titles, which mm-hmm. I can't remember now, but that one jumped out at me. Okay. I went, and, and then I had my, my, a good friend of mine, Opio Yasanti, who done, who's done the cover of a number of my works. And I said to him, I need a, I need a, a cover. Right. And when he sent me that, the cover that, that, that's there now, it just, it, just, it just fit with the name and the cover. And then I said, this is it. Okay. When, prior, to, prior to this book coming out, when I, when I compiled the, 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 the books, well, the poems into a book, and I got it back, and it's like, wow. I, I cried, man, I ball. I ball, I ball, I ball, I ball. I said, creator, this is what you want me to do. You know what I mean? It's, it, 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 when I got this book, as a book, I said, right it. You know what I mean? And then I started going, to, I started going out and started reciting, I started mm-hmm. you know, sharing my story, sharing my journey, that kind of thing. And, and the realization, like I said, and when I saw that, I said, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know? yes. so, and, that, and, that, and that's how that was born, in a sense. Excellent. So I want you to do My Mind's Eye. Yeah. I looked at it. I like the title. It grabs me. I think it's the first one. It's the very first one. So I'd like for you to do that okay. live for all of our <laughs> viewers right um, here on Pep Time. And the background, again, like I said, I was having some visions at the time. And, and one of the things which, which um, impacted upon me was I, I, I took some time out to meditate. And while I was meditating, mm-hmm. I saw myself as a scribe. Mm-hmm. I saw myself as a scribe way back in the time when our ancestors were creating so many magnificent things in Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw myself as a scribe when our ancestors were t- being kidnapped from the motherland and taken to the Caribbean. And I saw myself writing these things, mm-hmm. these things down. And that's how my mind's eye came about. Excellent. You know, so this is how I go. My mind's eye. My mind's eye watched a brown colored wooden ship on the horizon. It appeared suddenly out of the golden sun. White square flapping like big seagulls wings flapping floating over the water, hitting the beach, then began the slaughter. Men, white like rolling waves, skin like my brother's sister's gun, passed, now on the ground. Eyes blue, still, no life there, no feeling anywhere. Like a tiger, ready to pounce, ready to kill. My mind's eye watched, our ancestors gunned down, arms outstretching in loving welcome. Blood drenching the beach, fear now known. Eyes wide, staring at what had come, wickedness declaring. Doctors, doctors, administrators, kings, queens, men, women, children, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers couldn't have seen the danger of our love given to another being. Heard the like cattle, bounded shackles, transported to faraway lands, it's evident today we shift by the desert sand. Nowhere to go, lost, we don't even know. My mind's eye watched, our ancestors lament, whipped, lashed, raped, murdered, Betrayal of each other easy when tempted. Life had no meaning. A thought of our future, a victory worth earning. No going back, no turning. My mind's eye watched the privileged life we now live. Will we work and die as they did? 
in the face of oppression, death, hateful deeds, creating our own reality, determining our own need. Learning about self, read our heart in our blood. Our ancestors rest in truth, rest in peace, not driven by others into the mud. <laughs> so that was written back in September 93. This was written, first written yeah. September 8th, 1993. And um, did you write it exactly as it is now, or did you add on when no, you realized that you were going to publish? No, I, that, that was that well, that's what was written, and that's what I tried to compile into the book. That's excellent, that's excellent. Thank you. All Thank right. You. So I know that you've also done some short stories. Yes. And um, in terms of your education leading mm. for you to become a writer, did you go to creative writing courses, those um, kinds of stuff? Yeah, funny enough, um, I, I've done academic writing. Mm -hmm. I went to college, went to university. And I found, in terms of, in terms of when I was going, to, going on, this, on this part of the journey, I realized that if, in order for me to, to empower, to share, mm -hmm. I had to come, come from a different source, a different way of writing. So yeah, but funny enough, when, when I was in Toronto, because this first book was, and the first two, two books actually were, were the majority of the material was written. Was our, this was compiled in, in Toronto, but Deep Roots was actually written in Toronto itself. Mm -hmm. um, and Colin Chana, you know, who, who I remember, I, I remember getting his book, um, Waiting in Vain, was it? Wait, wait, waiting, waiting in wait, Vain. Yeah, Waiting in Vain. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I read it, I said, ah, yeah, I like all this better write. So mm -hmm. I contacted him, I emailed him actually, and I said, listen, Colin, I decided on this journey of writing, and you know, boy, I need some help. I need, and, I, and I sent, I was in Toronto at the time, I'll never forget this. And I sent him my number, and he called me. Mm -hmm. He actually called me. I said, rah, this is a man who has a New York number one bestseller calling me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I said, you know, and I said, yeah, I respected him for that. And he said to me, I said, listen, if, you know, just, just continue writing, continue reading, go into courses, you learn different ways. And so, and so, I, I, and so I actually did. So, which has enhanced my writing, you know. So, um, um, and coming here, I've been able to get into a number of courses, um, and, and let's continue writing. Excellent. And we have to big up Colin Chana for that. Yeah, yeah. My longtime brethren. <laughs> he's written so many books and yeah. he's also the founder along with Kwame. That's right. Forgot Kwame's last Kwame Dawes, Dawes for the Calabash Literary Festival, which is which was typically yeah. held over That's the right. Memorial Day weekend <laughs> in Treasure Beach, St. Yeah. Elizabeth. It's no more. They did That's ten right. years and that's it. When we come back, we're gonna talk about Kwame's book, Deep Roots, Strong Tree. Don't go anywhere. Again, you're watching Pep Talk. And we are live from Brixton Hill in London. Hello world, this is Rick Zaron, owner CEO of Brand New Entertainment. I'm on the set of Pep Talk, chilling with Rosie Pepper Park. Stay tuned. Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, we are joined by Kwame McPherson, author of four published books with one on the way and many other things in the horizon. And just before the break, we touched on this new book, which has a magnificent cover. I tell you, I saw this cover on Facebook, and I went gaga. I mean, the artwork is astounding. It's called Deep Roots, Strong Tree, and it's a collection of short stories. Kwame, first of all, tell me about the cover. Who oh, did the uh, cover design yeah, for you? Opio Yasanti. And he, he okay. used to live here. He's now back in Jamaica. Um, he's a, he used to go to um, Norman, um, Norman Money Art School, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, he did a lot of work in terms of sculpture and, and so on and so forth. And he did, he's done a lot of paintings. Mm -hmm. um, and when I, again, when I, was, when I was trying to find a cover, um, I sent him the name. Of, as a matter of fact, he's done so much artwork for me. But I sent him the name for, for this particular book and I said, listen, I need something that goes with, this, with, the, with the title of the book. And that's what he came up with. And when I said, again, it's like, you know, so this, the way everything just fits. Mm -hmm. I know when it fits, then that somebody else is, or something else is being involved in terms of the creation of it. So, um, and that's how it came about. And he gave it to me and said, listen, Reggie, you know, wonderful work. As much people can buy the prints if they would, would mm -hmm. like to. Oh, excellent, um, excellent. Um, I think his website is www.jamaica50.com. Okay, but um, but again, yeah, so I was getting in contact with him with me, and I can. But he's 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 a wonderful artist, like I said, he's, and he's done about three three covers of mine so far. Excellent, I love this. And let me just read what they had on the back of the book about you. I know you must feel some sense of pride when we hear this coming from your first 
a collection of poems to this one. It says, Kwame McPherson, a new and exciting talent, provides a unique perspective into life's trials and tribulations through his own experiences and observations expressed here in Deep Roots, Strong Tree, his first short story book. So tell us about some of these 15 short stories. Where did these stories come from? Personal um, experiences or yeah. just observations? Um, both. Both? Yeah, the, the, the inspiration came because at the time, you know, there's so much that I wanted to say and so much mm -hmm. that I wanted to express um, and how I could help other people um, through my own personal journeys, uh, journey. And, and what I found is that I could, I could see an, an, uh, an incident or an event and then I try to compute it in my own head and said, okay, this is what I want to say mm -hmm. in terms of what moral is or the lesson that within that event. Um, so it covers a number of issues. It covers um, domestic violence, mm -hmm. sexual abuse, um, youth violence, um, unemployment. So it covers a number of topical issues, but they're all told in a fictional sense. You know, but, and there's some elements of me in that book. Excellent. And it says, it promises this, so you have to get this book. It says, after reading this compilation, you will be uplifted and empowered, seeing life for what it is, acknowledging, welcoming, and overstanding your own role. Yeah. So that's what they can get when they read this book. Definitely. And if you don't get it, talk to him because that's what he promised. So I want yeah, you to yeah. share with us a okay. piece of this story, Elmer Fudd Goes Hunting. And this was a third place winner, Awake the Mind short story competition in 2007. Just share a little bit with our readers, please. Okay, this is, a, and this is, um, like I said, this is a, one of my, my best stories for me within this book because it's personal. Mm -hmm. um, there's aspects of it which are fictionalized, but it's, it's, it's personal in terms of what I remember as a child. Okay. <clears throat> it says, Elmer Ford goes hunting. Slouching forward, his eyes buried in the television. Robert's gaze was transfixed by Elm, Elmer Fudd chasing Bugs Money across the screen. As usual, the lame chaser's inability to catch a grey rabbit makes him to be the inner hunter he is. Second deeper into the large cushion, Robert bites into another Oreo cookie, listening to the inaudible murmurs emanating from the kitchen. Bang! The sound resonates loudly throughout the house, startling Robert. Looking towards the kitchen door, there's more noise. Smash! Bang! Bang! You! Why don't you just leave? You! His parents' loud voices catch his attention as Bugs eludes Elmer Fudd again, this time down a rabbit hole. Crash! A smashed kitchen door flings open. Flailing, Mum falls through its splintered remains, tumbling onto the living room floor. Looking ugly, anger warping his handsome face, Dad closes, closely follows. Arms raised, boxer light against a sparring partner. Roaring, throwing himself onto Robert's hapless mother, Huge fists pound deadly blows into her soft, easy flesh. Curling into a fetal position, defeated, desperately trying to protect herself, she groans and gasps from each strike. Robert stands, silent, silently watching. The television no longer the distraction it once was, its violent cartoon pretentious and fake, now. A tear strolls down his chubby cheek, evidence of his powerlessness as a horrible scene unfolds before him. Too difficult for his young, innocent mind to understand. This can't be happening again. A feeling of imminent doom shows over him like a cancerous virus, flooding his young organs. It was the same emotion he felt witnessing the plump family cat, Tubby, in the jaws of Rex, the teeth of the Rottweiler from next door, gripping her thick, dark coat as it dripped blood, staining the ground, her warm life liquid spreading about the dog's paws, her fur tattered and shaft scattered. Then, as now, Robert couldn't understand what it all meant, since on that faithful Sunday, he sang songs about loving, God-loving creatures big and small. If God was love, then everybody should be loved. But if that's so, why were the bigger creatures always hurting the smaller ones? Standing spread eagles over his petite mother, chest heaving, eyes wild, fists dull for another round, there was a blank stare in Dad's eyes. Beads of sweat shined his face, standing with this as he widely surveyed the room, his eyes finally landing on Robert. Quietly whining, pain racking her body, mom lay still, not wishing to provoke yet another attack. Snarling, dad seized through lips, through thick lips. Go upstairs now, Robert. Scared, running hurriedly from the room, Robert bounded up the stairs. From below, his mother's screams pierced his thoughts, pitching the, the picture of Tubby into his consciousness. No, no! 
The same way of a howl of imminent death. Without a second thought, he dashes into his parents' bedroom, heading for the clothes closet. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us. And of course, if you want to hear more or read more, you can go and get this book, Deep Fruit Strong Tree. Now, is this the same book that you're currently promoting? In, yeah, that one's going to be promoted in Jamaica um, okay. later this month in June. And I know you were supposed to have been no. in Jamaica, yeah. Yeah. and <laughs> as fate would have it for yes. us, yeah. you're not yeah. there. No, that's Bad right. experience for you, but a great one for all of us who are watching Pep Talk. That's right. yeah. You're yeah. here with us. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're glad that you're okay. Yeah, and I, must, I would like to share that. The reason why I'm not in Jamaica is mm -hmm. because I was burgled um, <laughs> and they took my travel documents. Uh -huh. The morning I'm going to Jamaica, so that's why I'm here. So, um, so I, I, I decided to share that. But, um, but yeah, I'm glad I am here and I'm, I'm being able to share. So. I'm glad that you're here too. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing with us. And I know you have, you mentioned that you have an autobiography that's coming out. Yeah. You haven't quite finished with that one yet, no, no. but you have another book called Tour Fallen. Yeah. And this is also a collection of poems, yes, but this time this one is dedicated to the children and the young people who continue to die. Yeah. Why this dedication? Um, because it, it was it's, what was what's been happening, and it, especially um, with our young people, whether they're in the UK, whether they're in America, whether in Canada, or whether in Jamaica, is that they're 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 in a state of a flux, so to speak, and that now many of them are dying. Mm -hmm. And I figured that in terms of my contribution, because all, all proceeds from this book will go to some form of youth charity or some, 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 some um, and I felt that in terms of what I'm blessed to do, I can share my perspective of, of particular things and how they I see mm -hmm. them um, through my writing. So I guess, uh, and it's, it's just giving back in that sense. Excellent. Yeah. We love when you give back. Yeah. Pep Talk is all about passion, energy, perseverance, and people who are doing community service. Mm -hmm. So we're glad that you're doing something for the youth who really need that. And we're going to talk about one more book mm -hmm. that is not yet out, no, not. but of course, because this is Pep Talk and I'm Peppy, we have it right here. Yeah. And um, this is a book that's coming out in July, yeah. and it's called Yard Vibes. Tell us a little bit about this book. What can uh, people expect in July when they go to get this book? Okay, basically it's a, it's a book of my, how I see Jamaica is a, a beautiful home for me. It's mm -hmm. home, you know, home for many of us. Um, home where I would definitely return to. And there's so many stories, you know, Jamaica's alive with stories. You know, anywhere you go, anytime, whether it's on the bus, on the street, you know, this on the radio, whatever it is. And this was my way of just capturing stories. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the thing is about, the, which is interesting because there's always a debate about patois, you know what I mean? <laughs> whether it's back in Jamaica or it's abroad. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is that I'm a part of a, a, a group which is looking at how patois can be taken to a wider forum, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's, a, it's a language on the street, but still yet it's not seen as a language in itself. Right. So this book is, is the dialogues in patois. Really? Yeah, so it's a Jamaican book in that, in that sense. So all the dialogues in patois. Um, and it's my way of, again, of, of, of taking everything to another level in that sense putting it into a story form so people can read and, and probably get the gist of what is being said but based on the, based on the English narrative that's going on. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's a, it's a Jamaican book in that sense. Jamaican book. Yeah. So you can forget some of the other books that you've seen about how to speak Jamaican patois yeah, exactly. and then get this book <laughs> and get involved in the dialect. Yeah, so yeah. Um, Kwame, yeah. I thank you so much for coming on Pep thank Talk. So it was my pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Before you go though, yeah. I want you to tell the folks how they can get, okay. um, get more information on you All right. and get um, the books and stuff. Right, the books themselves are on my shop window. The website is being constructed as we speak. Um, mm -hmm. It's www.lulu.com, that's L-U-L-U.com, forward slash Max Key, M-A-X-K-E-Y. So that's www.lulu.com, forward slash Max Key. Or you can get in contact with me mm -hmm. via Right to be Free, which is W-R-I-T-E, the number two, the letter B, <laughs> F-R, and the number three, at gmail.com. Excellent, excellent. Again, you're watching Pep Talk, and my guest today was Kwame McPherson. Thank you. Keep it locked, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Welcome to another edition of Pep Talk. I'm your host, Rosie Peppy Park, and today we're broadcasting live from Brixton. Let's do that again. Brixton Hill. What a name. Bye bye.